to give it just a couple more minutes. Let, uh, let some folks get in here. We'll get started. y'all taking the time out of your Sunday afternoon to uh, join us. We are uh, out here in the field today on this beautiful Sunday afternoon. And let me show you exactly what we're doing. Who wants to take a wild guess? Well, I'll add my focus in there. That's a little bit All right. Who, who can be the first one to guess what we're doing today? Come on. Got, got any takers? Anybody guess? Ah, uh, Kate Daughtry with a win. Yep. We are uh, we are spreading chicken litter today. Uh, hopefully get this thing wrapped up tomorrow. In fact, that's what our next uh, release video is going to, uh, that comes out on, what's today, Sunday? It's going to come out on Wednesday as us begin to spread chicken litter. We've been, uh, we've been after it for, I don't know, probably eight, Eight hard days now, and we're knocking on the door, getting done. Hopefully, we get done tomorrow before some pretty serious storms roll in. Uh, the seven-day forecast for next week is looking pretty rough for West Tennessee. Uh, could be localized rain events anywhere from four to eight inches of rain. Uh, not going to hurt my feelings a bit, especially if we get uh, all this chicken litter spread before then, because uh, you know, we. We could, we could definitely use some rain. This is about the driest spring that I've ever seen. And uh, we, we got plenty of moisture to plant and everything. I'm just kind of worried about not having a, a full tank of gas for the long haul. So uh, we get several rounds of rain this coming up week. Uh, won't hurt my feelings a bit. Kind of give us a chance to just get a breather because since probably the beginning of the second week of March, we've been... I mean, we've been, with the exception of Easter Sunday, we've been working six and a half days a week, Monday through Saturday, and then Sunday afternoon, just trying to get all this field work done, getting ready to plant, and, uh, you know, let's spread this chicken litter this year. That's taking a big chunk of time that I haven't had to do before, so uh, we all we all wore out. So a week downtime in the shop to maybe get some of our shop projects uh, done is not going to be the worst thing in the world. Anyway, guys, this is, is going to be maybe a little bit different than what our uh, usual live stream is. I'll, I'll try to take as many questions as I can, but, you know, I've also got to run this thing in the meantime. And uh, you know, and uh, Andy's putting out about two tons of chicken litter per acre. And it, it doesn't take him very long to empty that buggy. So uh, I'll try to take questions in between, uh, in between loading them up. So let's see what we got so far. All y'all guessed right. I'm proud of y'all. Jordan McCullough says the city of Jackson should be proud. Surprisingly, I, I've been monitoring Facebook. We've been spreading up here in Jackson for about three days now, and we haven't gotten one single honk of the horn. We haven't gotten one single middle finger. Uh, been no post about it on Facebook whatsoever, so... You know, maybe the general public is, you know, kind of understanding what we're doing. You know, we're using a very uh, environmentally friendly source of fertilizer. And, uh, you know, they, they know that, uh, you know, agriculture in the city must, must coexist. So I've, I've been really pleased. We, there, hasn't been any, there hasn't been any Facebook alerts go wild about in the area. And I say there hasn't been. I might have missed them. But overall, it's been pretty good. And plus, this chicken litter... Uh, most of what we've been spread has been piled here since December, so it's been uh, it's been composting for you know a good four months now, and uh, I'm not gonna say it doesn't smell. I mean, you, you bite into uh, the pile and you can get some uh, you get some odors, but uh, the odor generally dissipates real quick, and uh, 
it ain't been as bad this year as what what I've seen in the past. Bobby Scott, you're more than welcome. How's it going, George? Bobby Scott, you have to tell me what Matthew 12, 11 is. I, unfortunately, I'm not familiar enough with the Bible to just recognize a bunch of verses. Uh, Big River Farms, what will we be planting on this field? Uh, this field that we're in right now is going to be corn ground. Uh, you know, we're spreading. Uh, we've actually been fortunate enough to get enough chicken litter this year to spread on all our ground. So we've been spreading soybean, cotton, and corn ground. Josh Smith asks, how do I feel about that $4 corn? Um, we, we don't have $4 corn here. I actually, uh, I mentioned this in uh, some of my film yesterday. We actually contracted a little bit of corn for December delivery. Uh, futures price was four seventy four, I believe. And historically, we can uh, historically Tyson has been offering fifteen to twenty five cents over for December delivery. So if we can get that again this year, well, you know, we did a hitch drive contract, and if, if we can get that again this year, you know, we'll be up close to five dollars. Which you know, I, I'd love to see better than that, but uh, five dollars is a lot better than four dollars. So. I did go ahead and pull the trigger on getting some booked. It wasn't a big part of my crop, but uh, you know I'm gonna I'm gonna continue uh, very monitoring the markets very closely, and I'm definitely not scared to uh, go ahead and contract some more. You know, if I can get that four seventy five to the five dollar range. Riley Garrett, uh, Andy is on the is on the spreader. Hey, Andy, I smile. You're, you're on a live TV right now. Hey, what are they doing that? I didn't know what he said, but. All right, y'all just bear with me for about five minutes. We'll get them loaded up and we'll get back to the questions. This pile right here, I don't know if anybody asked, but this pile right here, I think we got about 121 tons in it, or it, we, we did before we started. And uh, Andy's putting out uh, 1.9 tons to the acre. I was wanting to put out two tons, but uh, there was a mix up in the uh, drivers that uh, Paul lit her out here. We got shorted one load on uh, on these farms, so I had to cut back the rate just a little bit to make sure we could uh, cover uh, cover all the ground. Hey, uh, I'm doing this on my phone. Uh, let me know uh, how good or bad the audio is. You know, I'm, uh, I don't have a microphone that hooks into my phone, so just use the microphone on my phone. So. I know it's probably kind of loud in here with the hydraulic noises, but it's the best I can do right now. Don't start dropping out on me. We'll we'll be done in another another few minutes here. Glad to see this pile's got some moisture in it because we got about 15 mile an hour winds right right now, and if this stuff was dry and dusty, it'd be blowing it up probably over in the, into my neighbor's fields. You can see it's uh, it's weathered real good. Why is this thing not focusing in? You know, we pushed everything up in a pile when it was hauled out here, and it uh, it got a crust over it from rain, and uh, that crust really helps it shed moisture. So it's done a really good job of just sitting here and composting for the last four months. I figure it's 
that sun re reflecting off the windshield there make me lose focus. In case y'all wondering, uh, we still love this uh, Salford BBI Endurance Spreader. It's done a marvelous job on spreading. And uh, this spring, when we get done tomorrow, we will spread about 1,700 tons of uh, litter with it, and it hadn't missed a beat whatsoever. It, it's been doing a really great job. Kind of wish I'd had the money to get a little bit longer one, say about a 24-foot one. Uh, that's a 20-foot model, but 24-foot probably would have let us haul another 10 tons on there, get across a little bit more ground between fill-ups. As it is, I think that one, uh, this one holds around 9 tons. Uh, is what we've been able to get on it. Eight, eight and a half, nine tons of litter. So, you know, two tons an acre, a little over four, four acres per fill up. See if I can get about three more scoops on here, and he'll be good to go. Or it'll be spilling off the sides. Like we got Chronicles of Kayla, a celebrity from Missouri in here with us today. Guys, I appreciate all the comments about our videos. Uh, Grizzly Ridge Runner asked, what's the cost of the chicken litter? Uh, we bought all of our chicken litter uh, this winter for between $28 to $30 per ton. And then uh, trucking to get it hauled from the chicken barns, which is about 45 minutes away, has cost us another $16 a ton, but because we got our own spreader, you know, we're not having to pay that 8 to $11 per ton spread charge, so we are saving, saving that. So that's what our cost is being this, this year. No, I've not met Troy Landry, Ashley Jones, Ronnie Adams. No, I've not. Riley, uh, Andy's running spreader. Mentioned that. Okay, 
Hey, Bobby, appreciate that. Ryan asked, how long until we start planting corn? Uh, actually, we're going to plant soybeans first this year. Uh, and hopefully we got uh, about maybe three more, three to four days of field work after this rain comes through to finish up with field prep, and then we'll start planting soybeans in. Uh, I mean, we only got like 100 acres of full-season soybeans, so it won't, it won't take that long. We'll get those knocked out of the way real quickly because uh, our soybeans did so fantastic last year getting them planted early. We're going to do that again this year. You know, it takes a day, day and a half to get those planted, and then we'll be able to switch over quickly to corn and start getting corn in the ground. And Riley, I will be planting soybeans on that heat farm, and actually we're going to be using that Borgo air seeder to plant beans this year. They want me to test out uh, planting soybeans into some uh, really high residue, and we've got that situation this year, and we're going to be planting our full season beans with it. Marcus James, I'm going to be planting about the same amount of corn as I had last year, about about 500 acres. So uh, not really too concerned about the price, more concerned about keeping the rotation. And yeah, I know the price doesn't look good now. It didn't look good in February when I was doing all my plans. But one thing I've learned over the years is that what pays the bills in February, it doesn't always work out to where it's paying the bills in October. There's just too much that we don't know what's going to happen. So we try to spread our risk around. All right, good. My audio's not bad. I hate doing a live stream on the phone. Riley Garrett asked, am I still planning on getting a gooseneck? Uh, yeah, eventually. If I find a good good deal on, on one, I'd, uh, I'd like to. We, unfortunately, we, we got a lot we got a lot of needs on this farm every single year, and it's not really a high priority. But, yeah, if I come across the right one, I'll, I'll definitely do it. Appreciate the scripture, uh, Kate and Bobby. Uh, Riley Garrett asks, uh, what are the advantages on using a three-point style planter versus the full type? Uh, I really, I really don't know that there's really that much difference in functionality. Uh, a full type planter is going to have more weight, be able to put more down pressure on the road units if needed. I know in like our burn down strips because I'm using the hooded sprayer to make up my burn down strips and it's on a three point hitch. Uh, a three point hitch planter would be better playing into it because my GPS would automatically would, would keep me on the road, especially going around curves as it is because my hooded sprayer is three point and my planter is drawn. When I'm going around curves, especially on the inroads, you know, I've got to manually steer to compensate because uh, you know, the planter is going to drift to the inside of the curve, so I got I have to adjust man, uh, planting uh, manually with a drawn planter. So other than that, I mean, I, I really don't see see much difference. I, I mean, they're both going to do a dang good job. Man, y'all y'all killing me with the comments today. Grizzly Ridge Runner asks, is the chicken litter bought by the ton or the truckload? It, uh, I buy it by the ton. Uh, Jordan, uh, I, that's a million dollar question. We got the spreader, so if we can get the litter, we can spread it. But we were, we got fortunate this year. There was two barn owners that called me wanting to, uh, want me to buy their litter. Uh, and uh, about you know, for our, for our spring needs, about six chicken barns will supply the litter that we need to cover all of our ground. So uh, we were able to get this year, uh, next year, who knows? Uh, and he asked me to pray for your dad. He had a stroke and had a quick farm. Sure, Jordan. Uh, Lord, I ask to be with uh, Jordan's dad, just be with him and uh, be with him as he goes, goes through this time dealing with a stroke. Lord, if it's your will, uh, heal him, bring him back closer to as close as he can to normal and functionality. Give him a good quality of life. I pray you sleep in Christ's name. Amen. Paul 
Paul Saffrey is from the UK. What time? Uh, what time of day is it over there, Paul? Appreciate the comments. Rodney's from Waco, Texas. Thanks for the comment, Rodney. Mike Haas, what's going on? Just, just another working day. All right, this guy's from Greece. I've got no idea how to pronounce his name. It is in letters that I don't recognize. Rodney Evans asks, do I know Zach Johnson of Millennial Farmer? Uh, yeah, I've actually met Zach a, a couple times, had, had some good conversations with him. Rodney Evans asks, what tractor and why you're using them? Uh, right now, what I'm on is our uh, New Holland T6010 tractor. Uh, got the front end loader on it. Uh, Andy's on a T7.270 New Holland. Uh, Kate Daughtry asks, what's my opinion of the Eclipse tomorrow? Do you think, uh, do you think uh, tomorrow uh, may be the day the rapture of the church will happen? Well, Kate, for one thing, uh, nobody except the Lord himself knows the time or day that all this will end. And the church will be taken up to heaven. So might be this afternoon. Might be tomorrow. Might be 100 years from now. Nobody knows. Be prepared for when it does happen. Uh, as far as the solar eclipse, I mean, I'm excited. Uh, I've I've seen one solar eclipse in my lifetime, and it wasn't a total one; it was a partial one. And tomorrow is uh, supposed to be a full one. We're not going to be in the path of totality. It's going to go through the Big Hill, Missouri, which won't be that far away. And actually, my plan originally was was that we would just take off tomorrow and drive up to the Big Hill, Missouri. But we're behind. This chicklier needs to be spread before rains and plus uh, the forecast for up there in the boot hill is not looking good it looks like it could be a lot of cloud cover now actually i think there's supposed to be a little bit less cloud cover here than it will be in the boot hill so i think we're supposed to get something like 98.7 percent totality here so it, it'll be pretty dang close to uh uh to total I'm, i imagine we're going to turn the lights on, on the tractor for 45 minutes or so while it happens but I, I'm excited about it. I think the next total eclipse is supposed to happen in 2077, and uh, good Lord willing, I won't be around, around to see that. Okay, the gooseneck, talking talk about a gooseneck trailer that hits up, hooks up to that gooseneck hitch we installed on our Dodge. Bobby Scott, what size gooseneck are you looking for? I don't know. I, I'd like something with, uh, I'd like a tandem axle with dual wheels on there. You know, it's got a real good weight rating. Uh, I'm not, I won't be real picky on size. I'll be more picky on price as long as it's big enough to, you know, haul, haul the things I think we might need to haul on there. Marcus James asks, what's my thoughts on Case H's new uh, AF-11 combine? I mean, it's a pretty machine. It's a it's a neat machine, but you know, practicality. I've got no use for it. I mean, it, it's too dang big. It's too dang expensive. I'm sure there's uh, some farmers that might benefit from it, but you know, our class seven combine is all the combine we need here in West Tennessee. You know, I mean, at, at some point, you know, they come out with all this stuff that. Only just a handful of farmers can actually be able to benefit from, and there won't hardly be any farmers that can actually afford the stuff. I mean, that AF-11 combine, it, you know, I have fully expected to have over a million dollar price tag. I, I expect they're going to probably going to market it just a hair cheaper than uh, John Deere's X9, if, if I had to guess, but... Yeah, I'll, ne I'll never be able to afford one. If I if I do, it'll be close to retirement age before they depreciate enough. I mean, you know, look look at the look at the John Deere Baylor pickers. You know, they first came out in 2009, full production in 2010, and we finally got one last year. They finally got down the price we could afford. You know, what, so like 13 years later, you know, I'd much rather they just focus on the on just a good regular size machine and make it and, and, and make it affordable. That's, that would be more benefit, but you know, 
make, make it headlines is what these companies want to do. And about the only way to do that is come out with something bigger, better, and newer than what the competition has. So, I ain't going to lie. It's a pretty machine. I bet it's going to be fun to run. I believe there's going to be some benefits to the twin rotor system. But in practicality, I wish they done. I wish they put that into a you know, class seven, class class eight combine myself. Because there are definite uh, there are definite limitations to a single rotor machine when it comes to distributing uh, grain evenly across the sieves for uh, for cleaning capacity. Alright guys, I'll be back with you here in just a, just a few more minutes. Let me, let me get, get Andy loaded up. So guys, uh, while, while I'm loading, uh, tell me what uh, y'all's plan for the Eclipse is. Are uh, any of y'all going to be in a location where... You can see it from, or you gonna have to travel, or are you, are you planning on traveling? You know, it'd be pretty cool to know what what all of y'all's plans is. I was I was actually seriously debating on whether to go live this afternoon or tomorrow during the clips, because I thought well there might be a chance there's a got a few viewers out there that won't have a chance to see it and would like to see it live. Then. Then I got, kind of got to thinking about what I want to do uh, film-wise tomorrow with the clips and us working in it. And I just thought there's, there's no way I could do a good job of doing either of them if I tried to do both of them during the clips. So I opted on the side of uh, I'm just going to try to film during the uh, clips tomorrow and do the live stream today. So, yeah, you will, uh, you won't get to see it live, but I, I will have some. I'm going to, I hopefully I will have some really good footage of the eclipse happening here and us working in it. Well, it all depends on the cloud cover, though. You know, if the cloud cover tomorrow is like it is today, you know, it's kind of going to be, it's kind of going to be, be hit or miss. But I got all the drones on, I got all the batteries on my my drone charged up this afternoon. And I got some pretty good ideas about what I'd like to do tomorrow if the weather cooperates. I should have loaded from the other end of the pile. I don't like that staring into the sun there.
Forum just said, yeah, y'all, y'all hit that like button. I don't ever ask for likes or subscribers, but uh, every time y'all hit that like button, it helps our channel out just a little bit more by showing YouTube our videos relevant, which uh, which causes them to like put it on more people's watch pages and stuff. So every like is very appreciated. All right, let me give you a view of Andy here getting started. Man, look at that black stuff coming out the back. Oh, so beautiful. Good organic matter going on the ground there. All right, guys, let's get back to your questions. I'm sure I done got far behind once again. Nah, I hate doing this with a phone. All right, where where was uh where was uh I think the last question I answered was about the X9. Where's that at? There we go. Thank you, Don Rock. That's a cool name, man. Rodney, I'd like to do more live. It's just between working and uh, editing videos, doing chores at home. I ain't got time. I, I don't want to get old old either, so I don't want to wear y'all out on it. Paul Saffrey says it is 11 p.m. there in England. Man, that just boggles my mind, the time difference is there. All right, guy from Greece, I don't know what your name is. Y'all are y'all are starting on cotton tomorrow? Wow. Can't believe that. I didn't think that... Uh, the weather was that much different, or climate was that much different in Greece. Riley Garrett asks, how do I like Dodge Gunners? Man, I, I love that truck. I don't like the 2500 quite as much as my 1500, but I mean, we're, we're just splitting hairs. I... I love both of those trucks are an absolute pleasure to drive. But surprisingly, my 21 model 1500 Bighorn Edition has a few more features on it than what my 22 model 2500 Laramie Edition has. Which I think uh, I think uh, the shortage, the, the electronic shortage supply during COVID probably has something. To with it, but uh, I, I love both both those trucks. I mean, they are just I uh, unless I have an accident and wreck them, I'm I'm gonna be having those trucks a good long while. All right, where were we? Okay, if I had the opportunity to run an X9 combine, if John Deere brought one out here, I'd drive the heck out of it. I don't care what color it is, I'll run it. Arthur O.K. cabin right now in Alberta, Canada. Man, I feel for you. I'm sure you're built for it, but uh, I've made my opinion of cattle very well known on this channel. I'm not an animal person.
I'm just scrolling through the comments here, guys. NH Farms, what kind of compost are you uh, are you spreading there? Uh, Riley Garrett asked me in my spare time what other uh, farm tubers do I watch? What spare time? Like I said, between working, you know, I said, well, we've been working six and a half days a week, uh, about 12 hours a day, and then having to edit videos at night. Uh, there is no spare time. But when I do get a chance, you know, I like watching the uh, local channels myself. Uh, Dylan Joyce Farm, Thomas Farm TNs, uh, and I'll watch Dion Wade. I uh, love watching Chronicle Michaela just because those channels are, are relevant to me because they're they're close by. They're generally dealing with kind of the same things that I'm dealing with. So I like to see how they're how they adapt to certain circumstances with their farm because a good chance I might learn something from them that makes our farm better. But other than that, I really don't care for watching farm channels. I mean, I live, breathe, and eat farming. Uh, if I got a chance to watch TV, uh, it, I want it to be something else other than farming. Great Christ is southeast of Poplar Bluff, gearing up to plant some corn tomorrow. Uh, what kind of rainfall are y'all uh, predicted to get uh, tomorrow? Here, Landy coming back down. And I know with our forecast, I wouldn't want to be putting any seeds in the ground right now. Uh, a little tidbit, I, I once dated a girl from Poplar Bluff a long, long time ago. Uh, Pipeline 3155 asks, how many acres will the spreader load cover? Well, it'll hold about eight and a half, nine tons. It depends on the rate. At, you know, two tons an acre, which is the max we're putting out. You know, you'll get over a little four acres. David Kramer asked how rough the smell is. Me, personally, I don't think the smell's that bad, but I've been digging in these piles for the last eight days. I probably kind of got immune to it some. So there, there are some points in the pile you, I bite into it. I, I, I notice it pretty strong. Arthur, okay. Kelly's uh, at the house, and considering how nice it is today, I guarantee you she is doing something outdoors. I don't miss it in the flower beds or pool. I mean, who knows what? She's going to be doing something outside. Uh, Riley Garrett, uh, that T7.270 that Annie's running, it's uh, 235 base horsepower. Uh, it's got a power rise up to 206 horsepower. Brian Travis says, any corn uh, in the ground in your area? Yeah, there's a, uh, the planters have been running pretty good uh, this last week. Uh, there's been both soybeans and corn go in the ground. I believe uh, Dylan's planted a little bit. There's been quite a few other farmers uh, running. And, uh, stuff's been going in the ground quickly. Uh, as usual, we're going to be a couple weeks late to the party. Okay, I answered your question. I said if John Deere wants to bring an X9 out there, I'd, I'd be glad to run it. Uh, we don't care what color it is. Uh, Rodney, I uh, asked, do I like Massey Ferguson more than red, uh, red or green? I mean, honestly, I, we, we are colorblind on this farm. I don't care what brand it is, as long as I can afford it and it gets the job, gets the job done. Uh, that being said, uh, there's no Massey Ferguson dealers in our area. I really don't know much about them. I know I saw them at the Farm Machinery Show, and they look like a good tractor. Uh, you know, pretty much everybody's going to make a good tractor there. Some are going to have maybe a fewer draw backs than others, but uh, I don't really don't care what the name on the side of the tractor is. You know, we run New Hollands because, well, I, I personally think that they've got the, the best cab, or they did at the time that I bought them, and uh, price is a little bit cheaper than uh, Case IH, definitely cheaper than John Deere, so that's the reason we went with New Holland. Uh, when it comes time to upgrade, I'll, I'll look at all brands. Uh, I've got a pretty high opinion of Fence, uh, especially with their service program. All the problem is it's, uh, they come with a pretty premium price tag right now. Okay, yes, I have seen Peterson Farm Brothers parody videos. 
Trey, Trey, uh, there in Missouri. How, how do y'all have a zero percent chance of rain for the next next few days? I mean, you not you not that far from me. You're like an hour or forty five minutes from me. How are y'all not going to get any rain? I'll get that. Yes, Kate, I loved the uh, Baylor picker. It, it was awesome. Uh, I liked it a lot more than the uh, basket picker. Definitely a whole lot quicker. Rodney, where did you say you were from? Were you, uh, were you uh, the one from Waco? Uh, he says that they're already done with uh, corn and beans. Yeah, I know, like, I know down there in Texas, I mean, heck, they, they start planting in February, I think. And then, then y'all got everything harvested by, like, July, if I'm not mistaken. Or at least some parts of Texas do. Right, it looks like uh, like Andy's uh, empty and coming back for more. Have we really been going this for 42 minutes already? I cannot believe it. I got you, Trey. Yeah, our rain's supposed to be, supposed to start overnight on Monday. Actually, we got a chance of rain today. I don't think we're gonna get much today, but our biggest chance starts Monday night and runs through like Thursday night. I know Andy's loving this field right here. You see them long, long rows? Uh, it can really empty a spreader out quick here. Plus, we got the pile right here in the field. There's been a lot of fields that. So he's kind of go. He's kind of had to go down the road a little bit to come back and fill up, which is one thing that's taking taking so much time. Get y'all centered up here. Get them loaded up again. Y'all time me. Tell us. See how long this takes. I'm gonna try and try and set a record. So for the farmers uh, that we got on here watching, uh, how many acres of wood crop are y'all planting? Or, or better yet, like uh, how how have you adjusted your uh, cropping plants this year based upon price and cost and, and other factors? Uh, what are y'all increasing? What are y'all decreasing? And how, how are y'all looking at it? I'd, I'd be real interested to know. I knew that didn't look right. tell y'all one thing, by the time I've loaded my last bucket of litter, I am going to have a Popeye right forearm. This uh, this joystick is uh, on this tractor, it's all mechanical, it's not, it's not electronic, and 
this table on this joystick has kind of gotten a little stiff. I got like a bruise on my palm and probably gonna have tendonitis in my forearm. I will, by the time we see, I figured up this bucket will hold just a little less than one ton of litter per full scoop. So, you know, we're going to put a, have put out about 1,700 tons of litter. So, I will probably work this joystick around 2,000 times or dump 2,000 buckets of litter by the time we get all of this done. How many of y'all seen the video I released today of Trailer Adventure where Kelly had, uh, had to go to South Dakota and uh, pick up the bin sweep? I don't think I'm going to get another one on there. All right, time. Who's got the time? How fast, how fast was that? watch the video. Did any of y'all read the comments? We had a, a two or three viewers in there that were just complete buttholes and 
know, everybody's got a right to their opinion. I'm not going to argue with anybody. I mean, you think what you want to. There ain't no excuse for coming on there and just being a complete jerk and butthole for it. I ain't got, I ain't got no time for that. So, if there's anybody on there that think about making a retarded comment like that on, or comments like that on, on our channel, I'll block you. I just, I ain't got no time. I ain't got no time for rude people. Uh, life's too short, and I, I don't have to deal with it, and I, I'm not going to deal with it. So, but for those of y'all that did watch, leave positive comments. You know, I, re I really appreciate that. And like I said, like I said, y'all don't have to agree with me, uh, and uh, I don't expect you to agree agree with me. But you know, I, I've, I've got no problem with with courteous uh, discussion. Um, I don't think much is going, going to come of it, but who knows? It's looking a little darker over that way. Maybe, like I said, if, if y'all disagree with me, that's fine. Uh, leave respectful comments, and I'll be glad to have, have a discussion with you. We might not come to a meeting of mine, but... I, I ain't got I ain't got no time for, for disrespect or disrespectful people. All right, where was we? I know what I got done got behind. Just when I was getting caught up, I got behind. Rodney Evans, yes, this New Holland tractor is a power shift. I wish it was a CVT, but this is a 07 model, and uh, CVTs were not uh, an option on this. On this size tractor at that point. Mitchell Cozer is sticking to a rotation. Answer my previous question. Uh, Trey, what's the what's the economic situation look like on rice? I mean, I, I know Arkansas or rice is grown just one state over, but I know little to nothing about rice. So is it looking looking pretty profitable? I know cotton's looking looking decent. It's the one crop that well soybeans looking pretty good or decent. You know, cotton's looking pretty good uh, profit wise. Or do you got some plant some forty eight A fourteen E beans beans this year? Uh, have you ever planted them before? Uh, it's a dang good one. I'm actually not planting any this year. Uh, I'm planting a, a very, very close cousin to that variety. It's, uh, I can't remember the number, but it's a brand new Extend Flex. Uh, but it's a uh, it's direct line lineage is 47A64s. Arthur, appreciate you stopping in. Y'all have, have a good rest of your Sunday. Riley Gary, what kind of side by side do I have? Uh, I've got two. I've got a uh, Can-Am Defender uh, HD5, and I've got a Polaris Razor uh, 1000XP. Kenneth, your, your stopwatch is off a little bit. That wasn't, that wasn't no two-minute two loading time right there. I was hoping it was under six minutes. Yeah, Tom. Uh, I think I think Kelly Kelly did a great job too. Uh, you know, she's she's a she's a little bit more high strung than what I am, and you know, for something like that. I mean, I've had I've had a grand total of three trailers in my lifetime come unhitched, and all three of those times it was due to my fault not having something properly done. And each time it's scary. Yeah, you know, a funny story. We had a we had a triaxle. Uh, a uh, triaxle flat trailer that hooked up to the truck with a pin hitch. And it, I was, I don't know, I was in my early 20s. This was right after my dad passed away, or, or mid 20s. Anyway, I I was in a hurry. I hooked the truck, my F 50 up to it, stuck the pin down through there, didn't put a clip through the pin like a dummy. There was no safety change on this trailer. Went down to, went down to Gadsden, which is the closest town, stopped at their little grocery store, gonna get me a drink. Pulled out of the parking lot and started turning, and that triple axle trailer was so well balanced, like you didn't even need a jag. But anyway, the tongue was doing this, worked the pin out. I made a left to get on the road. Trailer kept going straight, 
and the hitch of the tongue or the, the tongue went through the wall of the grocery store into their deep freezer. Talk about mortified. I learned a very valuable lesson that day though. I always put the pen, always put the clip in the pen. All right, here's Andy coming again. Oh, that's a beautiful sight right there, ain't it? All right, looks like he's, uh, he's getting close to half done with this field. My goal, my goal is uh, that we're in a 53-acre field. I definitely want to get this field done before we go home. If we can get started good on the bottom down there before we go home, be even better. Be less we got to do tomorrow before rain comes in. Because they say it's supposed to come in and start tonight, but knowing our luck, it'll come in mid afternoon before we get done. Riley Gary, what is my current biggest horsepower tractor? Um, we, we got two identical tractors. They're one year of production apart. They're you know, both two T7.27s. Those are the biggest ones we got. Um, in the future, whenever, whenever that may be, uh, yes, I will definitely be looking at the next size of tractor. You know, right now, both those T7 tractors are kind of uh, mid-range tractors. Uh, you know, the, the New Holland T7s are equivalent to a Case IH Puma series, which is one series below their Magnums. You know, same thing as a John Deere 7R tractor, which where his 8R is kind of kind of the standard. So I'll, I'll definitely be looking to jump up at that size, whether it's a New Holland T8, Case IH Magnum. Uh, I tell you, it won't be a John Deere 8R. I mean, uh, John Deere just thinks way too much of their equipment. Price is way too high. Plus, I'm, I'm not a big fan of the calves. So unless something changes, most likely it'll either be a New Holland or Case IH, which, I mean, they're, except for the calves, they're almost identical mechanically. I mean, they're both made by the same parry company and share something like 85% of their parts. So uh, definitely have a lot bigger choice of Case IH magnets in this area than I would New Holland, you know, not... Not hardly anybody around here runs New Holland tractors. Rodney, appreciate you watching. Y'all, you have a good rest of the afternoon. So, so Trey, I know I know rice yields are, are a lot bigger than what people would normally think. I mean, I mean, don't y'all make some like a 150 bushels an acre of rice? Is it rice? I think, if I'm not mistaken, rice is sold by uh, not not by the bushel by uh, it, is it counterweight or I can't remember exactly the exact term. I know I know it's different than corn or soybean. Let y'all see what it looks like might be rolling in this afternoon. Might need to be checking radar. Uh, I don't know if we're going to get all this afternoon in or not. Let y'all know what that is across the road there. That is a Black & Decker plant. So uh, you buy Black & Decker tools, it might have been made just right across the road from where we farm. Just a little tidbit for you there. That cloud's kind of got me worried, although most of this stuff is is heading north, north, east. So, uh, north is going to be straight that way. So, uh, for something to hit us, this probably going to have to form down here, move up this way. 100 weight, 100 weight, that's right, Trey. That's what I was trying to think of. Come, Andy, you out again already? All right, guys, go ahead and get your questions in. I'm going to get him loaded up and then answer whatever questions y'all post, and we're going to call it an afternoon on this live stream. I got to go.
can see at Dylan Joy's farm is uh, posted video today for me to watch. Oh, and uh, speaking about the video I released today, uh, Trailer Adventures with Kelly, you know, uh, uh, you know, Chronicles of Caleb wrote with her, and a huge thanks to Caleb for taking the time out of her schedule to ride with Kelly. I felt a lot better with her going up there with a travel buddy, but anyway, I think Kayla's going to be releasing a video tomorrow that has some of that uh, adventure in her video, so y'all be sure to... Uh, Check out her channel and, uh, and, see, and see what she's got coming out tomorrow. y'all are wondering, this tractor I'm in here is the one where we had the seat reupholstered from, uh, went from Claws to Marine Grade Vinyl, and I gotta say, I am loving it. This Marine Grade Vinyl is very comfy on the tissue. wondering our normal rate we, we, we've been applying chicken litter since probably 2011 but due to uh but due to cost you know about a ton and a half per acre is all we can afford and now that we're doing our own bread on a lot of our ground or corn ground at least you know we're we bumped it up to right there around two tons an acre so i'm kind of excited to see if you know we see another kind of yield bump from you know having another half a ton an acre of chicken litter on our on our corn ground this year. I know it sure ain't going to hurt nothing.
Minutes 14 seconds. I, I thought that was a bit closer there. Thank you. All right, guys, last round of questions. Uh, and then I'll end it whenever I got to load him up again. We've been going, wow, 68 minutes. Goodness. All right. Where was I? George, yeah, we're, we're mighty fond of our New Holland tractors. Uh, I can't speak for the combines, never run one. Uh, I know I know they look good. Uh, I do prefer Case IH on combines over New Holland because I really love the CVT systems. I love the hydraulic drive, less belts, bearings, everything else that we have to maintain. So it's, a, it's definitely a lot more complex system, but it's simpler to work on if that makes any sense so i i, I still gotta give the is the case i god who love those flagship combines riley garrett what's uh, my farthest farm actually where, where our farm is in crockett county and you know we don't we farm from right there or right there around our farm all the way up here close to jackson our farthest farm is probably about 10 miles away from the shop we really need to be going out the other way into Crockett County, away from Jackson, but we haven't had the opportunity to pick up any land out that way yet. But definitely don't have to worry about developing here as much going out that way. Ben Turner asks, when's the T8 or T9 coming to the farm? Well, I can tell you there's never going to be a T9 coming to the farm because we ain't got a need for a T9. T8? I don't know. Might be a T8. Might be a Case H Magnum. Might be a fit. Who knows? Uh, but we're going to do something at some point. I don't know. I I don't see it happening this year. Next year, maybe. Year after that, I don't know. Does that see how the economy uh, looks? What our needs are? All that kind of stuff. Right now, I'm focused on trying to save money uh, due to the uh, due to the economics that we're looking at right now. Thomas asked me, have I ever tried Vex Seed? Uh, I've, uh, I've had uh, test plots with Vex before, but I've never actually planted their, you know, bought and planted their seed myself. I know they got some good stuff out there. George Sharp asked, have uh, I considered using the air drill for your soybean this year? Yeah, and I talked about this earlier in the video. A forego wants me to. Uh, use uh, the air seeder for planting soybeans this year. We're going to plant them on 15 inch rows, so we're just going to be using the front gang of units. And actually, Borgo came down late this week and they put that air seeder on a huge diet. They removed all of the air planter units parts, the mid row banders in that bar. They took all that off the planter because it was really kind of hindering me, all that extra weight, reducing black ground clearance. Stuff. So they took everything off the air seeder related to the uh, mid row banders in the air planter part. Uh, probably, I think they said they estimated somewhere around five to six thousand pounds worth of stuff that they took off that air seeder. So it should be a lot more user friendly. 
and considering we're only going to be using one row of row or one gang of row units, we shouldn't uh, need as much uh, hydraulic capacity. So that combined with the uh, lower weight and stuff, uh, I'm really looking forward to trying it on, on soybeans this year. And we've got some really high residue conditions we're planting to, especially that U farm. I mean, y'all remember seeing all that, that thick layer of Bermuda grass and fescue and stuff we're going to have to plant through. We're really going to find out what that air seed is about on seed placement and soybeans this year. So really going to be interesting. Y'all y'all definitely stay, stay tuned there. David Travis came by y'all earlier this morning over by the bypass in Jackson. Uh, go to Love and Truth Church. That's a that's a really good church. I've had uh, heard a lot of good things about it. Actually, we weren't there this morning. Our equipment was we was at church itself. We didn't get out here to field till about twelve thirty today, I believe. Paul Saffrey says uh, they love their Case H flagship combine here in the UK too. An answer this question for me, Paul. Does y'all have all the emissions crap on there that? ours does that we got to deal with you mean in, in the uk i i, I imagine y'all probably do but i know i've seen some versions of case h combines exact same they're basically the exact same versions what we got but going to like south america they don't have the depth and all of that junk on on there which really annoys the crap out of me uh so just really kind of curious what kind of emission system y'all have to deal with over there in the uk i mean it actually would surprise me if you say that Y'all actually have more stuff on your equipment over there being, you know, European Union. I know y'all, they're real strict on environmental stuff over there. Riley Garrett says he just ordered a hat and shirt. Thank you, Riley. I really appreciate it. Uh, for the rest of y'all, y'all don't know about it. We got an online store, uh, farmmerchbin.com. Got other YouTubers on there, Dylan Joyce Farm, Chronicles of Kayla, Thomas Farms, TN, The Crop Critic. Uh, all has got online stores on there. Uh, all the stuff is made by a small family-run business about 45 minutes up the road. They had, had, handle taking all the orders, making the merchandise, and shipping it out. Y'all want to support us or other local YouTube channels, y'all be sure to go to www.farmmerchbin.com. You know, we got, you know, we got, got hats. We got, well, I don't have a shirt on today. Uh, got got... Uh, Got coffee mugs, uh, license plate decals, you name it, it it's on there. So y'all, y'all hit it up if you want to. I, I really appreciate it. Good deal, David. All right, so Paul says yes, they do have deputy missions over there. Oh, look here. We got Allison Bowers watching us. Uh, Riley, she's the, one said she's the one that handles and takes your orders and says uh, it should be going out tomorrow. Hope y'all enjoy it. Oh, uh, glad, glad you joined us. Uh, unfortunately, we're about we're about to close out today. We've been going uh, been going 75 minutes, close to the longest live stream I've ever done. Uh, Paul, we're, uh, well, so let me show you what we're doing. Everybody else, guess what that is in the, in the bucket there? They guess right. We're, we're, we're spreading chicken litter today. Uh, Bill, uh, Kelly went to South Dakota to pick up another uh, paddle sweep for our grain bin, you know, Last year, we went to South Dakota to get a, a paddle sweep for one of our grain bins, and I liked it so much that uh, as soon as we run it, I called uh, my dealer GSI and said, get me another one. I want to put it in our other 48-foot bin. So that's what she went and picked up. I still got two more bins with regular auger sweeps, but they're the ones that are fixed in there. We don't have to uh, pick them up off the center well and set them to the side. Uh, and plus, they got better traction wheels on them, so we don't have to push them into the grain as much as we did the original two that we have now now replaced. So those panel sweeps are they've been a lifesaver. You know, I can clean out a bin all by myself with minimal work 
for myself. We don't have to set it on the center well to start it and then let it run around a few times. And all we got to do is just do a little sweeping around the edges, go in there with a the leaf blower uh, to you know, clean up the dust and a little bit that's left on the floor, and that bin is clean. Uh, highly, highly recommend them. They, they are worth they are worth every penny. Well, Paul, uh, yeah, we're about to get off, but you got uh, you got 75 minutes. Uh, you can go back and start watching from the beginning. Actually, Drew, the, the smell on this litter is not not bad at all. Uh, I've definitely had a whole lot worse. Uh, this is not not bad at all. And I think I think a lot of it is because it's been sitting here composted for about four months, so. Uh, yeah, I've, I've been really pleased with it, and uh, I, I've been keeping track of Facebook. Have, haven't seen any complaints on Facebook yet. Normally, when we start spreading, there, there there's a Facebook uh, chicken litter alert that goes out for all across Medina and Jackson. Uh, yes, Paul, we will, well, God willing, we'll be planting some early beans. We got about three to four more days worth of field work in the field. We're probably going to be rained out Tuesday. All the well, it's supposed to rain from Tuesday all the way through Thursday night. So once it dries up, we got about three to four more days worth of field work in the field with uh, dirt pans, spreading fertilizer, and then we will start planting uh, soybeans as, as soon as we can after that. So I, I'm targeting right there around the middle of April, April 15th, to April 20th would be the ideal time. Hopefully, take us a day and a half to plant our soybeans, and then we will switch over immediately to corn. All right, guys, I'm about talked out. Uh, Andy should be uh, coming back here to load up here in just a minute. Guys, I really appreciate y'all taking time out of your Sundays, riding along with us. Hope y'all enjoyed it. We'll be back out with another video on Wednesday. I don't know if we'll do another live stream, but hopefully it won't be uh, you know, four months or three months like the, like the last one was. We'll try to get back here a little bit quicker than that. So, guys, appreciate y'all watching. See you on the next one.